federal government. And so that includes you know, all the different um, government agencies. It could be uh, the Department of Housing, Department of Commerce, um, the Department of Housing, Urban Development. It just depends on um, what particular agency is that's applying and the type of monies that they're looking for. And um, again, uh, for small businesses, there are different funding um, methods to use and to research to find um, those funding dollars. Now, in terms of grant application, is there a difference between the local, state, and national level, or I guess federal level? Um, and you know, how do those? I mean, how do somebody prepare? You know, for different grant opportunities, is there a standard? You know, every time you apply for a grant, you need X, Y, Z documentation, um, right. or is there you know some type of protocol or kind of a cheat sheet? cheat sheet per se on you know, what people can look at and say, oh, I need, you know, to have my EIN number and all of my, you know, P&Ls and everything like that um, to apply for a grant. Is there a standard protocol to any of this? Yes, there is. And it is a very detailed process. Um, so it just in the life cycle of a grant, so we call it the stages of a grant, there are three different um, cycles. And I was trying to share my screen with you, but we're experiencing technical difficulties as Serena shared. But in the grant life cycle, we call it, there's a pre-award planning phase, there's a proposal writing phase, there is an award phase, and then of course there is the post-award phase. And so in the pre-award phase is when you um, identify a project. So the you know, organization has a particular project that they need funded. And so um, you start looking for funds and you start at the federal government level, what's available in federal dollars, what's available in state dollars, and what's about available in foundation dollars. Um, once you identify a funding opportunity, then of course you have to determine if you're eligible. So you look through, you say, am I, is the fit right? You know, is there, am I a 501c3? Or what is the designation that I have? What is this grant requiring? And every single funding opportunity will have a set guidelines to it. And you have to follow those to the T. Um, what I like to tell people is when they're writing proposals, it, I think I shared this with you recently, is that you have to think like a lawyer and write like a journalist, right? And so you have to know what those guidelines are if there are uh, regulations, federal regulations that are tied to this particular program. Um, and once you do all of that and you find that it's a right fit, then you can move on to the proposal writing process. And that's where you get the opportunity to tell your story, right? To, to paint the narrative of why you need these funds, what project will you be creating? Who is it going to impact? How much money are you requesting? How will you spend that money? Who are the partners that are involved? And um, I strongly suggest to um, those agencies that are applying that you work backwards. You establish a timeline and you work backwards from the deadline because you not only have to submit it by a certain time, but you have to identify um, partners, collaborators, make your application stronger. Um, you have to maybe have letters of support and letters of commitment from those particular partners. And there's also developing a budget. There's identifying who is going to monitor and evaluate and report on this particular grant within your agency. Um, so you have to prepare um, and your budget as well. You have to prepare your narrative, your statement of need. So there's, there's a process that goes through creating a strong proposal. Once that is complete, and you're ready to submit, you still go through the review process, the approval process, if there's a director or president or someone that needs to sign off on it, and then you submit. Um, once you do that and you are chosen for an application, you will be notified of your award. And it may not always be the amount you requested. So that is something just to keep in mind, like you want the big ask, right? Like what can you do with this particular money? But just keep in mind, uh, what is the threshold for you? Like what is the the, the range that you can operate this program with. And uh, if you are awarded, yay for you, um, you are now on your way to implement this grant. And so that's the post award is starting the implementation of it, the reporting of it, the evaluating of it and the monitoring of it. And then of course, um, sending all that information back to the agency that granted you the money. And, and, you know, this is such a long process, you know, when it comes mm -hmm. to grant funding, what does the typical, you know, preparation timeline look like? Because I think one of the hiccups that, you know, we as a Chamber of Commerce see a lot, um, and even, you know, in our daily lives is that we always try to rush things, right? And mm -hmm. so we're always like, oh, yeah, the deadline is a week away, we can totally, <laughs> you know, knock this thing out. Um, so in your professional opinion, you know, what is your recommended preparation time? Because it sounds like this does take a really long time to kind of prepare for. 
Yes. So like when I said that you work backwards, it depends on when you identified that particular opportunity. It could be that you identified it. Um, it was it was released. So there's there's a catalog of federal domestic assistance that lists the different funding opportunities. Those get released. And with those opportunities comes a deadline date. So it just depends on when was that release date? When did you find that particular? Because it could be that you didn't find that opportunity until a month into the release date. And so you have less than the, that amount of time. So if it was, say, released in August and the due date is December and you didn't see it until October, well, then you have a few months to put it together. But there are times when, um, as you know, we've worked on grants here within the office where we've had a week to prepare it. So it just depends on when those are identified. I know that right now um, the city of Fort Worth has released their mm -hmm. new preserve the grant funding for tomorrow or it re mm -hmm. released yesterday um, yes. for people to start applying yes. for. Um, right. I know this is kind of your specialty is grant funding. So can you dive into a little bit about the city's grant funding and what that opportunity means for our Fort Worth business community? Yes, so the city did open up its application for its second round of funding of Preserve the Fort, um, releasing funding for small businesses and nonprofits. So it is including nonprofits in this particular opportunity. I know that um, they are accepting applications through October the 2nd, I believe. And um, the cap on that, the monetary cap on that depends on the type of organization applying. So small businesses, there's a cap between 100,000 to 150,000. And I believe nonprofits have a cap of 50,000 to 100,000. So I will make sure that our nonprofits know about this because um, yes. I think it's rare for nonprofits to be included in a grant opportunity, if I'm mistaken. Um, actually, small businesses are the ones that are rare to be included in a small in an in okay. opportunity. So, yes, yeah, so usually small businesses, when they come to look for grant money, as a grants writer, we tell them, you, there's not that much money available for small business in ways of a grant there there is but it's a small amount you have to be very intent with looking for it um, I know that banks will immediately turn small businesses onto the loans and but I will say that SBA does have some grant programs that are available and you can go to grants.gov to look for those particular grants for small businesses so I think two of the most um um, resourceful websites would be grants.gov and then sba.gov. Is that correct when it comes to, you know, small business help? Right. For small businesses, nonprofits, now there is a plethora. You can go to grants.gov. Um, there are different, um, there's a foundation center website that you can go to. There's, there's different information depending on who the applicant is and what type of money they're looking for. Now, in terms of the main focus of grants, um, you know, obviously we know that there's different industries across the board. Mm -hmm. Do you ever see that maybe there's grant opportunities that favor one industry more so than the other? And if so, what advice would you give to those industries that are kind of left out of that picture? So what I tell people is to collaborate. That's the biggest thing is to, it makes your application stronger when you work with another agency. It also helps you to think outside the box there is a pot of money that you're sitting on and maybe your particular service doesn't exactly do what the grant is asking for, but you know of another agency that could provide that particular service. So invite that agency to come to the table and see what they can contribute to your application, see how you can work together and collaborate. Because grant money, um, it's to get you started, right? It's like the seed money is to plant you to get you started or to enhance your program. Um, it, they want to see that you're going to be sustainable. So partnering with other people makes your application stronger as far as sustainability. I love that. I want to open up to the audience a little bit um, and just kind of see if they have any questions for us. So I will let them ask the questions to come in. And this can be anything you know specific related to grant writing that Crystal can kind of help us answer. Um, but I want to get into a next question. Um, I guess in terms of you know grant seekers, what are your top three tips that you can offer them? My top three tips that I can offer grant seekers is be tedious, right? And be intent with the money that you're looking for. It takes a while to identify the perfect fit. So like I said earlier, you have to be creative and think outside the box. Um, don't just automatically think, well, this doesn't apply to me because it doesn't fit exactly my A, B, and C, right? Think of how can it fit my A, B, and C? Who can I partner with for that to happen? You're kind of, I'm kind of feel like I'm breaking up here. Yes, for that to happen. Um, the other one is be sure that you follow the guidelines like read the notice of funding availability. Every single um, grant 
has a notice of funding availability that includes the guidelines for that particular program, what the funder is looking for, what the grant maker is looking to fund, and follow that to a T. So I've lost you, me. like I hear you talk. I see you talking, but I don't hear you. Can you hear me now? Now I can, yes. Okay. Go ahead. Um, what, so here's a question that's come in. Okay. So what are some common grant qualifications for small businesses? This is somebody that has asked on Facebook Live. Um, what are some common grant qualifications for small businesses? Um, it depends on your particular business and what exactly um, the money that you're looking for. So there's not a one size fits all. So that's why it's important that uh, either you have someone on your staff that you can work with or that you're able to come to the chamber or um, access um, my services, someone that knows how to read the applications and can look for the particular money that you're looking for to meet your program. So there's not a one size fits all. I can't just say, oh, go to the SBA and this is gonna fit your business. You know, you have to, First, share what your idea is, what it's going to fund, who's it going to impact, um, how much money you're needing. I love that. And I one of the things that I love about you, Crystal, is that you are so approachable. Um, so especially when it comes to, you know, questions like this and, you know, if somebody really is needing, you know, a consultant on grant help, um, you're definitely going to be a go-to person. I know that you are for the chamber because um, it's, you know, I know that it's a one-on-one -on -one kind of process because um, they are all so different. So we have another question that came in um, from Facebook Live and Jasmine is asking, have you noticed any major differences between corporate, state and federal grants? Any major differences, they're all different, right? They're all different. They're going to have uh, more monies. Of course, the federal government will have uh, more monies for programs. However, those monies are not always released. So um, it depends on legislation. So that's kind of the opposite side of what I do as well as um, in my governmental relations. I do look at the legislation and to see what money is being approved and how it will filter down to the different agencies. And when it filters down to the federal government, is it going to filter down to the state government and then the local government? And another question that came in, um, one of the things that we noticed that we work with a lot here at the Chamber of Commerce is, you know, our business development manager, um, our director, I'm sorry, Jasmine Gutierrez, she does an, a phenomenal job of doing business consultations with people that want to start up a business. So are there any grant opportunities available for startups? Is that something that we might start to see down the road um, or is it traditionally more for businesses that have already kind of been established? So there are monies available. It, again, it depends on what field, what, um, who they're targeting, what their project is, what their business is going, who they're going to service, right? So um, it, it, we look at who are you servicing and then looking at the grant maker and who are they looking to give funds to and matching those two together. Like I said, it's not a one size fits all. And then here we have Michelle Krim joining us today. Um, so she has a question and as a fellow grant writer, she appreciates the important tips. Can you share any what not to do examples or helpful tales for smaller nonprofits? Okay, so hi, Michelle. Um, I, I do have some tips. And one of the biggest things that I see is um, what we call it jargon, right? People wanna write their, their story, but it becomes jargon. So I, I always advise, a client or an agency to remember the three C's. You wanna write being clear, concise, and you wanna captivate your audience, right? You wanna tell your story without having too much jargon in it. You also want to make sure that you are eligible to apply for the grant. You don't wanna go through the, the work of writing almost what is a book to some people and then find out at the end you're not eligible. I love the three C's. I'm going to have to start using that now when it comes to all of our chamber events. Clear, concise, yeah. and captivate. Right. Um, in terms of one of our um, guests on Facebook Live is asking, um, you know, one of the biggest challenges when it comes to applying for any type of funding opportunities in general is always that required documentation. So mm -hmm. what would somebody do? What are the alternatives if they do not have that necessary documentation that's being asked of them? If they don't have the documentation, yes. then, then you may not be able to apply. But I think most, most nonprofits and most businesses um, will be prepared. Um, there's documentation as far as there's a lot of forms that need to be filled out in the beginning. It's not just writing your narrative. There in the federal grants, there are like a standard form. 
um, it's called a 424, you will have to fill that out. You'll have to register for a SAMS number. You'll have to register for a DUNS number. There's different um, things that you have to check off the box before you even submit your narrative. I love and that. And like I said, it's, it's not just one size fits all. That, that's a federal grant. That's not a state grant and that's not a foundation grant. So it's different. It just depends on what, who your agency is and the type of money they're looking for. Absolutely. I know, um, for example, there are some great opportunities that, you know, people have received where they open up like a training center um, mm -hmm. where they're able to, you know, expand their outreach. Have, is there anything here in the Fort Worth community that you've seen in terms of, you know, our local business community receiving grants that we should maybe highlight um, in terms of what they're doing for that expansion and outreach for our community? Yes, so our chamber has received a grant. We are working to be a small business development center. And we recently received funds from the United States Hispanic Chamber of Commerce from a grant that was written here through our chamber to open a program by the title Abierto. And um, Jasmine is working on that particular project. So yes, we are um, hoping to help our small businesses, in particular our Spanish speaking small businesses, as well as our English speaking community um, to be a resource center, right? But pre-COVID, um, we wanted our chamber to be a one-stop shop and now we are working to have our chamber do the same thing, but virtually. Absolutely, and I know that we're excited yeah. about that. Um, here's mm -hmm. another question that, com that came in from somebody that's joined us on Facebook Live. Um, they're asking, where do they even start? So I think this takes us back to the beginning of our conversation a mm -hmm. little bit. Mm -hmm. um, so they just wanna know the starting point, you know, in terms of looking for grants. I know that we've talked about grants.gov. Um, is there any other resources out there that, you know, somebody could maybe, you know, type into something simple as typing into Google and say, you know, grant opportunities near me for yada, yada, yada. Um, what does that kind of starting point look like? So if you're using your Google, you want to say grant opportunities for your particular project or your particular organization. Can that person share with me as an example, what type of monies they're looking for? Um, let me see, Sylvia Rodriguez, I know that you are joining us on Facebook Live. Um, can you share with us some of the ideas that you're looking for in terms of grant funding? Um, so we can definitely help, you know, kind of guide you in that right direction. Um, while we wait for her response to come in, because I know that there's a little bit of a lag between right. Zoom and Facebook. Um, Preparation tips, you know, I know one of the biggest things is you have to have all your documentation. You need to know that, that you're applying, you know, for the right grant opportunity that you're seeking. Is there any, you know, tips or advice that you have in terms of preparation that, you know, maybe um, people wouldn't think about something that's kind of out of the box? Be creative. Be creative and ask big. And don't think that the number is way too big. As long as you can justify it and it is documented, you have it factual, then think big and ask big is my advice. Like think outside the box, think who you can partner with. How will this, how can you sustain this grant or this program once the grant funds has run, has run out? I love that. So it looks like Sylvia is asking, um, how does she start looking for grants for a startup? For a startup, what is her startup? That is a great question. Sylvia, yes, if you because, can type in the comments yeah. below what your startup is, mm -hmm. we can definitely help guide you in the right direction. I, I know I sound repetitive, but it is very important to understand that grants are not a one size fit all. So there are so many funding agencies, especially um, on the federal level, that it depends on the type of project or program that you were trying to create. And then we can find the right fit for you once we identify your organization, and then your project or your program. Absolutely. I haven't seen anything come up just yet. Okay, it's very specialized. It's specialized and very detailed. What is one of the challenges, Crystal, that you have seen um, in your grant writing profession? You know, what's something that is kind of a barrier that you have to overcome in this profession alone? Is um, finding the money for programs. I mean, we have a lot of nonprofits that are needing um, dollars to sustain their particular organization or to even grow or to scale. Um, and so just finding that money that is able to fit them in, and also applying for these programs and these dollars, the money is limited. And so that is one of the challenges is we might find you a portion of monies to fund your program and then looking for the remaining balance to make your program whole. So that is one of the challenges. 
Um, the other challenge is working with particular agencies or with clients that um, go full force and in the middle of it decide it's just too much work for them. So that is challenging. And then the reporting. So I know a lot of agencies or um, grants, grantees find the reporting to be very difficult because while they receive the funds, they don't have anyone on staff to be able to report back to the agency on how the funds are being spent. Absolutely. Let me circle back to Sylvia's question. So she's seeking um, grant opportunities for a startup and special needs product sales. What would her starting point be? Special needs product sales. So I would, I, if, if Sylvia was sitting with me having a conversation, I would ask her to please elaborate on the special needs product sales. <laughs> um, and I say that because I, I need to be so specific on what you're um, researching and the type of dollars you're using for, uh, looking for. Is it education related? You know, can we, can we fit it into a um, department of education? Can we fit it into a department of commerce? Can we fit it into um, environment? So it's just, you know, my wheels start to turn, but I need to know exactly what the monies are going towards. Is, you know, special needs products, what, is, what exactly is that? And so if I have that question, then um, the grant maker is going to have the question as well. So you wanna be able to write to your audience and know exactly in detail. Again, you want to be clear and concise and captivate your audience, right? Be able to say, this, this looks like something that I want to fund and have no questions at the end when you're finished reading. I love that. We have another question that came in from Julie Burkle um, asking, are there any grants for trucking businesses? Trucking businesses, um, what exactly is she trying to do with the funds? Is trucking business as in importing, exporting? Let's see. Is Julie, if you can let Commerce us know funds? what your goal for the funds would be, we can help mm -hmm. guide you. Right. So they just, yeah, I'm happy to sit with anybody and discuss their ideas and point them in the right direction. In terms because of, again, oh, I'm sorry. The, so it looks like for Julie's question, it would be construction. So any grants for trucking businesses and construction? Construction. So automatically, I think that uh, maybe Julia's company can partner with someone who is um, maybe doing an economic development type grant. Um, I know EDA sometimes releases funds for um, entrepreneurs um, of scaling their businesses. And so that's an opportunity for maybe Julia's business to partner with a different business. So I, I, again, I would have to sit down and see exactly what her business model is, what she's needing the funds for, um, what is the construction for? Are you constructing, you know, a bridge? Are you constructing a building? You know, what exactly are, are you doing? Are you going to do with these funds? And then I can better guide you on which agency to seek money from. For everyone that has tuned in with us, I definitely want to uh, make sure that I share Crystal's contact information with you as soon as we close out um, today's webinar, just so you do have that opportunity to connect with her. Because um, I know grants are complicated, and I know that they are, um, you know, not a one stop shop by any means. And so there's definitely a lot of conversations that can be delved into um, around that. I want to get to another question that's come in from Vincent Caballero um, asking, and this is a really good question. This is in terms of that narrative that you have to submit whenever you're applying for grants. Um, have you ever noticed that people seem to have difficulty expressing their opinions um, and their ideas when they're applying for grant funding and how does that affect their application? Yes, I do. And so um, part of the work I do also, if you prepare your proposal and you need a second set of eyes, I read that particular proposal as a grant maker would. I sit with the guidelines that was released from that particular grant maker, and I make sure that you're following those guidelines um, in, a clear, in a clear, concise manner. Um, if I am not able to understand that and understand what your program narrative is, who you're targeting, um, your scope of your project, how your budget relates to it all, who's going to monitor, then neither will the funder. So I, I have to so ask important. you a question I have, yeah. Is you know one of the th one of the best things that I've ever heard is you know sometimes the best communicators are not always the best, um, right? So I know for mm -hmm. me personally, I can talk to somebody about my vision and idea, 
um, but actually writing it out does not always match what's in my head. Um, mm -hmm. So I love that you're able to come in and, you know, really help your clients really explore and elaborate on what their vision is for the grant opportunity that they're applying for um, to hopefully secure that opportunity. Um, there aren't any other questions on my end that I'm seeing, Crystal. Are there, is there anything that you want to leave us with on a positive note, um, you know, as we kind of go through the end of the year, since we're already in September, um, in terms of, you know, what businesses can kind of look forward to in 2021, um, and just some, I guess, tidbits of information and, you know, positive message to leave them with when they're looking for grants. Um, I do tell my clients to endeavor to persevere the money will become available. You have to keep looking. Um, don't think that if you don't get funded the first time that your project will never get funded ever. You have to go back and uh, review your project, maybe um, scale it more to what the funder is looking for. Um, kind of a try and try again method, right? And so, and then also partner with other people. Sometimes people see things within um, your project that you may not see, something that you can grow bigger or um, really focused on, like arrow in on, on this particular program. So I, I always encourage people to partner with others and let other people have a second set of eyes on it. Absolutely. I know that I couldn't do my event job without talking with the team and, you know, working through mm -hmm. ideas here at the chamber. So I love that collaboration piece. That's so important. Mm -hmm. um, there is one last question that came in. Um, Wendy Carillo is asking, how do we set up an appointment with Crystal and is there a cost to do this? <laughs> um, you can find me at the chamber and to meet with me, there's not a cost. So I hope everybody that is joining us today does have an opportunity to meet with Crystal um, and kind of dive into, you know, your goals for some grant opportunities for you and your business, because I know this is something that, you know, is going to be something that's well sought after, um, especially as we still go through unprecedented times. But I do want to share my screen with you guys. You all can capture um, Crystal's contact information here. Um, I hope that everybody can see this. So here we have um, Crystal's name, of course, and then her direct email, um, and then her phone number as well. So both of these are going to be your best points of contact for her. Um, and I know that Crystal loves helping our chamber community and our Fort Worth community. So please do reach out to her. Um, and in terms of if you guys have any questions at all, you can always reach out to the Hispanic Chamber of Commerce. We are 100% here for you um, all of the time. You can reach us by phone or email. And, you know, we're here for you and your business. We're here to help. And we know that times are tough right now. So anything that we can do to kind of step in and, you know, lead the way for getting you, you know, back on your feet and bouncing back is going to be so important. Um, so please reach out to us. And Crystal, thank you so much for joining us this morning. I know that we have some technical difficulties at the start, um, but I'm glad that we were able to power through that because I believe this was really helpful information for a lot of people that have joined us this morning. Thank you for having me on. Alrighty, everyone. Well, it looks like we're at a stopping point and we would love to share, you know, as much information with you that we can. Um, so what we will do is, you know, send out Crystal's contact information to everybody that's registered. Um, and I will also leave it in the Facebook Live video below. Um, and to close out, Vincent has said, tough times don't last, but tough people do. And I think that's a really good note to close out on. So Crystal, right. thank you so much you. and have a great Wednesday. Thank you. You do the same. Bye.